What are the Denver Broncos' plans for running back Jaleel McLaughlin now that he has officially made the 53-man roster? As any undrafted free agent will tell you, making the 53-man roster is only half the battle. Then, you have to be able to find yourself on the field and not wind up each and every single week on the inactive list. And Jaleel McLaughlin is somebody that I feel like is not going to end up on the inactive list. The Broncos have a clear plan and a clear vision for how they want to utilize Jaleel McLaughlin. He's got a really unique skill set that he brings to the table, and the Denver Broncos know that that kind of playmaking threat would really do wonders for this offense. And what's cool about the Denver Broncos' backfield is that pretty much all three of their running backs have a different skill set and a different style of play to them. Javante Williams, of course, is going to be the guy who has those big, angry runs. He's going to drag defenders with him for four, five yards downfield. He's always going to bring that nastiness and that physicality to his run style. Javante, I feel like, is going to bounce back really strongly from his torn ACL. Now, I want to make something perfectly clear here. Javante Williams is still RB1 for this team. He is still going to get the lion's share of the carries. He is showcased in training camp that he's very comfortable and confident where he's at in his recovery from his knee injury. Although, in the preseason game that he got action in in San Francisco, he did have some plays where you could kind of see the rust a little bit. I feel like once he gets in there in the game against the Raiders, he's going to be able to knock off that rust without issue. Then, Samaje Pirine, he's got his own unique skill set, of course. He said it himself, he's not going to give you very many flashy runs or very many explosive plays, but he is going to give you the hard-earned four or five yards when Whenever you need it. And one sneaky good aspect of Samaj P. Ryan's game is that he's really good at picking up blitzes out of the backfield. So when it's third down and the defense decides to bring pressure, especially from up the middle, Samaj P. Ryan does a really good job of picking that up. He's got the size and he's got the physicality and the strength in order to take on blitzers. So that's a really underrated element of Samaj P. Ryan's game. And that's one of the big reasons why the Denver Broncos brought him in in my opinion. Then there's Jaleel McLaughlin who can really do a little bit of everything. He's got the insane speed. We already know about that. He's got sub 4-4 speed. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it's sub 4-3 speed if we read it as 40 time. He's the fastest player on the field for the Denver Broncos. There's no question about that. But what's cool about Jaleel McLaughlin is that he's got the downhill speed, but he's also got some insane patience in his running. He will sit there and basically pitter-patter at the line of scrimmage and wait for his blocking to develop, and once he sees the the hole he hits it and he hits it hard and on top of that he's got really good change of direction as well he's not just a one direction linear runner he can still maintain high level speed going multiple different directions and even though he slows down a little bit when he waits for his blocking to develop he's able to hit his acceleration pretty much at full speed almost instantaneously it's almost like a tesla going out there and accelerating i believe teslas go from zero to 60 in three seconds or whatever it is. I'm not a car guy. That is Jaleel McLaughlin. He's got incredible acceleration. His patience and his vision are really something that I feel like not a lot of people talk about, but that's such a strong element of his game. He does what he has to do in pass protection. I don't think the Denver Broncos are going to ask him to pick up blitzes too often out of the backfield, but he is able to at least get in there and put forth his best effort. And quite frankly, he's got some pretty nice strength to him as well for somebody of his small frame. So I don't think that Jaleel McLaughlin is going to be a massive liability out there if he does have to go out there and pass protect. Then he's got a strong skill set as well as a receiver out of the backfield. The Denver Broncos can run him on swing routes. They can run him on Texas routes. They could even line him up as a slot receiver and have him run like a slant route or a drag route or something like that. I mean, Jaleel McLaughlin, he's got the ability to just stop on a dime. That's something that I definitely noticed watching him in training camp and the preseason so I feel like he could really polish up his route running and that's not saying that his route running isn't solid now but I feel like it could be even better with coaching and with due time and that's scary to think about if Jaleel McLaughlin can hit his ceiling 
I feel like he could really be almost like an Austin Eckler type player. He's got that dynamic skill set where he can be utilized as both a rusher as well as a receiver. The Broncos have had such a strong history of late round to undrafted running backs making an impact. Obviously, from Terrell Davis to C.J. Anderson to Philip Lindsay, and now Jaleel McLaughlin has a chance to add on to that and be the next big playmaking threat out of the backfield for the Denver Broncos. And again, that's not to say that he's RB1 for this team. I feel like he could very easily see 10-plus touches every single game, though. I feel like 10 touches, like five or six carries, and then the rest is receptions out of the backfield. If that's Jaleel McLaughlin's day at the office, he could easily go for over 100 yards a game with just those limited touches. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he averages over five yards per carry. Philip Lindsay did in his rookie season. Jaleel McLaughlin could very easily do the same thing. So, at the end of the day, Jaleel McLaughlin knew about the Denver Broncos' strong history when it comes to late round and undrafted running backs, and GM George Payton said that the Broncos wanted to draft Julio McLaughlin, but the board just didn't fall that way and that the team was just super fortunate to be able to get him as an undrafted free agent. And just because a player doesn't make it through the draft boards of teams, that doesn't mean that he's not a really good player and that he can't make a strong impact. We've seen that time in and time out here in Denver. And once again, Jaleel McLaughlin is just another example of that. And I feel like he's going to make an impact on this team as potentially a Darren Sproles type player for this Sean Payton offense. And seeing what Sean Payton was able to do with guys like Darren Sproles and then other guys such as Pierre Thomas, ooh man, Jaleel McLaughlin, the sky is the limit for him. It really is. I'm curious, Broncos country, what do you feel like a stat line for Jaleel McLaughlin is going to be this year? I feel like he might get upwards of 400 rushing yards and then another 200 out of the backfield as a receiver. I really feel like Jaleel McLaughlin is going to see more and more snaps, especially as we get later into the season, and he could be like a secret weapon for us as we go into the home stretch of the regular season, as well as hopefully a potential postseason berth. I don't see the Denver Broncos winning a playoff game, but if they can get to the dance, Jaleel McLaughlin will certainly help them out if they can get there. All right, Broncos country, be sure to leave a like on this video as well as subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. Those are two free and easy ways to show your support. Helps tell YouTube to push this channel out and helps us get seen by more and more members of the community just like you and me. And until next time, guys, this has been another episode of Denver Broncos Syndicate. I am your host, Gage Madrid, saying peace out.